people that you'd like to send this on to uh, throughout your institution afterwards or um, or share it you know internally um, we're more than happy to provide this link after today's meeting so you can have that to either refer back to or to share um, within your organization so um, without further ado it looks like we are just about there as far as attendees we still have a few people joining but I think due to time Steve I think let's go ahead and get started I'll pass the time over to you okay. um, and uh, and we'll go from there Thank you, Scott. And just verifying you can hear me OK. I can hear you and I can see your screen, so you should be. Excellent. A Thanks. complete go. Thanks, Steve. On behalf of CSG, we can't thank all of you enough for taking the time today. I know we're in super extraordinary times and for you to take an hour out of your day um, to hopefully share information. I think that's the real value of what we're about to do uh, to give you a description. So we tried to not reveal everyone in the event some or a lot of you would prefer to just attend and, and uh, participate as you see fit and decide how your name appears or not. Um, so we tried to conceal as many of you as we could. Um, but I'll, I will tell you there's 70 different leaders from um, many different financial institutions on today. Um, Every level of leadership is really represented for every line of business, starting at some CEOs, COOs, heads of HR, heads of IT, um, heads of many lines of business, um, and last but not least, security, some, some heads of security and uh, senior members of security. So we have a great group to draw from here, um, and there's a variety of concerns and questions that all of you had and I, I captured those on a series of slides and we'll just go bullet by bullet and what I'm hoping is um, either uh, when the issue comes up and if you feel strongly about it and want to provide some input uh, this is one of those times we, we compete all the time in the financial industry but I've always found in all the years that I've been doing this that when when times are difficult the competition goes out the window and we're all ready to help each other and I'm sure that's what brought many of you here today. So we sure appreciate that. But um, I cannot imagine a more difficult time right now to be a leader and trying to chart a course um, through all that's happening. And having some interaction with a few of you over the last few weeks, um, I think everyone's doing a terrific job, but every day poses new challenges. So. Um, with that, we'll, we'll jump into the first slide and, and start through this. Um, seemed like pain points was the best place to start with this. And um, I know um, all of you are seeing hardships out there. You have customers who are not able to open their doors, um, customers having financial issues, not sure where to go. Um, so, I, I tried to rank these. This one appeared in a number of you's responses, so I put it as number one on the pain, uh, pain point slide. So um, if, if some of you'd be willing to start um, inputting some chats of, of what solutions are you coming up with for, with your customers? Are you, um, are you uh, voiding fees? Are you skipping some payments on some loans? Or, or what kind of things are you considering at this point? Um, even though there is some government assistance coming, I think people are already uh, feeling the pain a bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for one second here and see if anything appears. We having any luck, Scott? Uh, looks like you're fine. Other than skipping payments, we have a submission from someone. Uh, skipping payments is another option um, that they're doing at this point. Okay. Well, it sounds like fees and payments. Uh, what I saw from your responses are the most common that you're either doing or considering. So hopefully that provides some um, input to all of you. Um, the next one on the list is working remotely. And uh, although some of us used to do it out of choice, uh, many of us no longer have a choice depending on where we are. So 
I know this has become um, a very large issue. It was mentioned many times throughout the responses of, of managing uh, remote workers, especially contact centers. So if we could start queuing up your input or questions around that one. Um, some of the types of responses that we saw were contact centers where space is an issue or um, limited locations is a challenge. So there's not a lot of options for moving people around. Um, equipment is a challenge. Um, quality of um, both video and audio for those that are working remotely. Um, setting up a social distancing issue for call centers or contact centers of any kind. So anyone got any input there? See, some of those questions are still probably coming in, but um, <clears throat> just going back to your initial question too on some of the solutions and hardships, um, we had to somewhat submit to that even waiving early CD withdrawal is is another way of potentially helping solutions of person member or customer hardships. Um, and I would say too, just from our side, we've had some customers request CSG's assistance in helping with networking to a to point of uh, remote um, productivity and remote working. Um, it can be hard sometimes with, with everyone's IT staff either being limited or um, slammed with other things. Um, CSG has been able to and is able to help out um, in the need of that um, to help being either outsourced IT company at this point or just helping with networking questions in general. So um, one question we're having right now is all contact is, or is maybe not, it's less a question, but um, all contact center employees um, had rotating schedule to work from home prior to the COVID just for normal BCP purposes. So um, not necessarily everyone having too many issues with that because they've already had that in place. Um, but just keeping track of just the increased volume of branches um, and kind of setting those up by appointment, uh, cash volumes, things like that um, is probably going to continue to be a pain point for most. But it looks like everyone's kind of in agreement that most contact center or call center people are already working remotely and having um, having a good good experience with that. Well, that is terrific to all of you that your VCP plans. Uh, consider that as an option. Or perhaps having a lot of people work remotely and perhaps just a few coming in to an office where they can be spread out and keep uh, that uh, social distancing um, issue in place. All right, we'll move on. Anything, anything from your side, Steve, I guess, from your experience that you found that's helped with just productivity? I think one thing that people can maybe sometimes struggle with is when you're home by yourself working, how to stay productive, um, aside from the technology side of things, but just keeping um, employees engaged and working on and keeping that, that direction from their executive level. Yes, yeah, so my suggestion is, and we don't all have this option depending on our living arrangement, but having um, a constant place that we work out of rather than picking a place in the living room. Uh, you may also be there with other family members now. I mean, that's something we don't normally face when we work from home, perhaps, um, but there could be a group situation now. So having a place that you go to to work and then get away from when you're not working um, is a great idea if your living situation allows for that. And it allows people to personalize it to, um, if, you're, if you're having video in there, have objects around you that you want to be with your image. It um, uh, gives people the ability to personalize a bit with that. Um, and test with others when you're not on a call or not working and just see how the images look. This could, this could go on for a while, so I think we should plan for uh, a more extended time of working with this arrangement. It may not just be a few weeks, it could be longer. I, none of us really know how long this is gonna go. Yeah, Steve, this is Brian. You, can I interject on kind of how, what we're doing with our call center? Because it's, it's, it's been working pretty well. Um, so yeah, with our we're typically you know anywhere from 20 to 30 people in there. We got it down to uh, we're roughly about 
six uh, technicians working in there. We got them all spread out beyond six feet uh, with the, um, the management team uh, sanitizing, um, I think, every hour going through there. At first, I think everybody was kind of, they weren't really taking it seriously, but now with the, uh, um, I talk like when you, if you go to like a new season and you see what's happening there with the, the social distancing and everything, they're taking it pretty seriously and then we rotate them through, but we're keeping a minimum of, of six and, and uh, the rest of the office is pretty much working remotely and it's been pretty effective. The other thing we're looking at too is using uh, UVC lighting um, after hours, uh, which is a, is a great disinfective tool, which uh, um, we're open. We, we could talk about that technology as well because we're looking at other avenues utilizing that as well um, as a tool. It's disinfecting uh, high touch areas and, and other pieces of equipment that are used uh, within a branch or office or whatnot. Anyways, that's my two cents on what's it's worked pretty well for us and we seem to have it under control and being pretty productive with the remaining of the uh, the knock or the call center working remotely. Um, our BCP plan came into effect pretty well, but it seems to be effective um, and having them rotate through to keep them kind of up to speed with everything that's going on here, even though we're at a limited staff. <clears throat> Thank you, Brian. Um, I think one piece that we've also talked through is just video. Um, obviously, you can see me on video here too, but uh, I think video does make sure people get dressed every morning. I think that might seem like a like a small, simple thing, but trying to get back to your normal routine as much as possible and setting yourself up for working out of your pajamas, I think, um, from working from home can be something that inhibits that that um, that sort of, I guess, routine. So um, I don't know. We've here at CFG have posted um, trying to do our best to do video calls as much as possible too. And I've seen a lot of you, a lot of our customers on LinkedIn as well, posting really cool videos of 20, 30 people sometimes on a video chat. Um, I'm also curious, I guess, if people have seen that as being in a way to help increase remote productivity um, as you're having meetings and things like that, but just keeping your employees engaged. Um, if anyone has any questions on that too, um, curious, curious on that front. What? One other thing, sorry, I'll try not to uh, interrupt too much here, but this is Brian again. Um, another effective tool that we've, we've used is uh, uh, for employees that are working, um, it's worked really well, especially for our technicians out in the field, but even here at, the, at, the, at all of our offices uh, up and down the coast, we implemented, if, if you're working, uh, go ahead and expense $20 at your local restaurants that are abs absolutely decimated right now. Um, it's, it, you guys all know how horrific it is, but it, it made the employees feel really good. It was I got so many positive responses of going out there and spending spending a little bit of money on your lunch break uh, at a local restaurant, um, typically a local private one that's really using it. Obviously, it's to go only, but for your lunch break, um, was kind of a cool tool. Um, it doesn't cost a lot. It made everybody kind of feel a little better, and um, I, I felt a more positive spin around the. Uh, the call center and the company in general tool. But anyways, it, it was an effective tool that I thought I'd share. <clears throat> Anything else to cover on remote worker or social distancing? If not, we'll have bandwidth. I think that's I think moved towards bandwidth. Well, we do have one question of uh, customer saying they're having issues with VPN, so I think that's a good um, segue to internet bandwidth. Yeah. So internet bandwidth came up as an issue for about 60% of you. Um, some of that just could be limitations of your internet service provider, depending on where you're, you're logging in. Um, we're competing with a lot of other people at, at home that are probably doing a lot of streaming of Netflix and so forth. Again, more competition. Um, the, the one recommendation I've heard from a lot of organizations is for remote workers that can um, log off the system periodically to log on, download all their emails, go offline for a bit, do some work, log back on later, and repeat. And that has helped some, but I'd be open to any other suggestions from my colleagues or anyone online of of tricks that you've come up with thus far in this process.
looks like none at the moment um, other than VPN issues. And I think, um, you know, something that we've maybe not everyone knows CSG for, given our, our security roots and things like that, we do have some very good networking um, employees here at CSG as well that can help with some VPN routing issues. So if you obviously trying to connect back to some of your core systems and things like that, um, if you do place a call into, the, into our NOC uh, with the remote view team, we can route you to some correct employees here that can also help with, with routing and, and some VPN setup and even uh, troubleshooting too, if that's something that um, is, of a, is of need for, for you or your employees. So keep that in mind, I suppose. Uh, why don't we move forward to um, these next ones, Steve? Very good. Uh, the next item, again, mentioned often by, I'm guessing 50% of you, um, is a significant increase of ATM and ITM usage and some additional malfunctions as a result of that. Um, what was described by several of you as a um, four-time increase in people using ATMs and ITMs, and I think we all know that's a result of um, various decisions that institutions have made of either closing their lobbies altogether, only opening by appointment, um, controlling the numbers that are coming in. There's a whole series of strategies that you're employing, but nearly all of those is uh, pushing those customer members out to the ATMs and ITMs. So um, one suggestion would be uh, if you are seeing this malfunction activity, to um, schedule some time with your, your local CSG office and go through it with the, the folks that you work with, uh, describe what's happening and see if you can form a, a local strategy there for perhaps more frequent maintenance and that sort of thing to help out during this, this time. 400% uh, increase is a lot. Yeah, one thing too to think, I'm curious if anyone's had any unique uh, marketing ideas on just how, I think a lot of customers that maybe have never used a tube system or an ITM, sometimes even an ATM for deposits, um, sometimes are increasing some of the, the malfunctions because they're just not used to or, or familiar with having to use the system. So, you know, inserting things like paper clips and rubber bands and other things that cause machines to malfunction. Has anyone done any unique marketing or targeted marketing, I guess, to that matter of saying, hey, now that this is a new channel that some of you may be using for the first time, are you, uh, here's how the best to use it so that the machines are quicker uh, and work more properly for you as well. Um, that might be something that um, could help, I guess, with the malfunctions as well. We'll give it just a second before we move on and see if there's uh, any other input. Um, we do have one more question here. Um, does CSG have the ability to provide ATM terminal detail around volume of deposited media? Specifically, we know standard, you know, SDMs for the NCR machines can hold about 2,000 in notes. Um, they're searching for ways to identify how many bills have been deposited in ATM between settlements, so to make sure the machines don't get filled up, um, caution to be down or servicing. So, is there anything that CSG provides from that perspective um, to help with that? Um, and I'd be happy to kind of help, I guess, address this as well. And, and Daniel, if you're out there too, um, feel free to, to join in or, or to add some flavor to that. But um, we do have our electronic journal module within the command center uh, that shows the volume of your of your transactions. However, as far as tracking specifically um, by bills, I wouldn't say yes just yet, but that's something that we could probably look into to see, you know, if you're you know, are you running out of fives or is your is your you know acceptors um, running low? One thing we have looked at doing a lot of our customers aren't using the ATMs at fullest capacity. So for example, you have anywhere from four to five cassettes as an option inside your ATM for dispensing. A lot of customers are only just using two cassettes. So maybe looking at um, maxing those ATMs out to add the extra two or three cassettes that you're not using could increase your capacity. Um, obviously reducing the number of times that you have to settle your machines and, and bring them out service for replenishment is something that a lot of customers have looked into doing if you're not maxing out your capacity today. Uh, 
Shall we move on to staffing issues? Thanks, Steve. I'll just add one kind of generic item on the ATM, ITM, and I'll include TCRs in this uh, as well. This is Brian again. Um, just to let everybody know, we're, we're, um, our engineering and de development teams are, are working at lightning speed right now on some new technologies to help sterilize uh, cash and deposits and all those uh, machines, um, drive up carriers. Um, we, we found some very unique technologies that we're, we're working very fast to come out with, uh, which I think will be very impactful with, uh, um, we all know the issues with cash and how it can transmit viruses and whatnot. So. Um, if, if you have further questions with that, feel free to give us a call, but we're working very, very rapidly on uh, some ideas that uh, could help alleviate that problem. So the next slide. Sorry, Scott. Um, the next item is staffing issues. Um, there weren't, there wasn't a lot of description, but a lot of you responded that staffing issues were a pain point. Um, hopefully, it's not illness issues at this point, um, but perhaps people concerned for their safety um, and um, not going to work or increases that you simply don't have the staff to cover at the moment. Um, but if anyone could elaborate on what staffing issues they're having, um, perhaps we can get some responses to those practice items. Um, I have one. This is Jessica with Trailhead Credit Union. And uh, one issue we're running into is we have one branch open and two of our smaller branches are closed right now. Our one that's open has run into a real shortage of tellers and loan officers. So we had two people come from other branches to come work, but now we're concerned about doing a lot of, you know, staff flip-flopping in case one branch, you know, gets the virus and brings it to our other branch that maybe we could open. So I was just wondering if anyone else is having to navigate that or... That's a great question. What's the staff reaction when they get someone from another branch coming into their office these days? Are they a little standoffish, a little concerned? Um, you know, not we're we're all within a few miles of each other and we're a pretty close knit group. So everyone's already friendly with each other and everyone's really I'm very lucky that everyone's really like whatever we can do to help we're all hands on deck we'll, we'll be teamwork you know um so it's it's a good problem to have but now I'm concerned I don't want to put you know someone's safety at risk and then bring it to the other branch and get that whole branch sick you know so camaraderie is up morale is as good as it kind of can be right now but yeah Any other comments for anyone? Yeah, this is Brian Thomas with uh, Murdy and Trust. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know what we're doing with that because we have kind of the same challenges. For folks that we bring from one branch to another, uh, we try to make sure that uh, we do a good job of keeping them socially distanced from the other staff, um, but can still support in various capacities. Um, certainly we do a lot of disinfecting um, for where that person is. Uh, the big thing that we do on our Saturday uh, coverage is uh, with having uh, reduced uh, traffic coming in, uh, we have one branch uh, staff that will cover just one of our locations that we keep open on Saturdays, and that branch staff uh, uh, will just come in and work that Saturday. The following Saturday will become from a different branch. So we rotate so it's the same staff that's together on Saturdays, um, and that way it reduces um, the workload from the one branch that's remaining open. So just a thought for those of you that uh, are reducing your Saturday hours to maybe just one location. That's one of the things that we're doing is just rotating, but keeping the same staff together so we're not mixing and max, uh, matching different staff. This is Sonia from Kitsap. Um, we have had some uh, kind of pressure from um, our executive level management in order to, uh, to get more of ITM uh, tellers trained, but 
I we're having a hard time figuring out how to do that without having people six feet or more away. So you can use um, RC to remote in and watch the transaction, but you can't hear anything because the um, you know the headphone like training things are only so long. So I don't know if anybody has any ideas, then we love to hear them. That's a great question, Sonia. I think we'll give some people some time to answer that as well. A um, couple other questions that have come in uh, while waiting for answers to that um, is a germ guard. So Linda uh, just replied to you. We we do have some op options for germ guards from a couple of different providers and can to fill on those actually really well, uh, really quickly too. Um, so that's something that you can reach out to your account manager for. Um, uh, Henry mentioned since branch visits are only by appointment, they've been tasked by assisting other departments. So just work sharing, it sounds like. Um, the issue they face with training new employees, training has been performed at branches during non business hours. Uh, so that's been difficult too. So if anyone has any suggestions on, or if you have any suggestions, Steve, on how to help with training, um, or if you've seen anything from customers you've spoken with as well, um, please advise there. Excellent, thank you. Hey, hey, Scott, um, another another one I just thought of, another good tool that we implemented, um, and, and most of you might have seen them. We have these uh, little yellow buttons that have the infamous yellow smiley face on it saying, I practice social distance. To, we gave to all of our techs, but now all of our admin have. We, we ordered 5,000 more because we're just going to hand them out to uh, our customers, branch staff who, who would like to have them. It, it's kind of cool because it's got the happy face, but you can feel comfortable kind of showing your butt, hey, I'm, I'm practicing the the six foot social distance, so it's been pretty effective. Um, if anybody's interested, we'll just give you the uh, the company that makes them because we're not looking to, to make anything on it. We're just handing them out at this point, but uh, it's been a, another effective tool to make everybody kind of feel comfortable about their the new 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 uh, laws of social distancing. It's a little odd, but uh, makes them feel a little better. <clears throat> Uh, the last piece that I would add to that I think a lot of customers have been mentioning in my opinion from staffing issues is just the leveraging of video, right? So whether those be through ITMs or video lending technologies or other video collaboration tools um, like WebEx or Zoom or Teams, you name it. Um, those are options that can help with staffing as well and just not having to worry about people getting to physical locations but being able to fulfill um, on normal branch needs that way as well. Ironically, Scott, we've we've actually seen some departments uh, increase productivity uh, working remotely um, at home without having to travel or uh, traffic and whatnot. So uh, there has been some positives on, in some departments with just the productivity levels, which was kind of surprising to me. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. So we move on to cash. Um, Let's do it. I think it's universal that everyone's seen an increase in demand for cash um, and uh, an increase in, in cash, sometimes large cash withdrawals. We have another slide coming up that deals more with that. But um, is anyone having difficulty getting the cash they need? Hopefully not. This cash is going to be king for a little bit. Uh, this is Sonia from Kitsap. We did have some problems getting fifties, uh, uh, and the um, deep old truck driver accidentally put twenties in the fifty uh, cartridge, thinking that that would be you know good to replace. Because um, we thought when we did the order, they said they didn't have them, and they said, "Can we give you extra 20s? We said yes, but we thought they understood that they couldn't put it in the 50s <laughs> cartridge. And yeah, so we had a little, a, a couple hiccups. Have you seen those issues was restored? It was just a short term shortage of 50s? It was short term. And then also people wanting large, oddly, they want larger bills now for some reason. Before everybody hated the large bills and now they're asking for hundreds. <laughs> yep. You know, you can't make anybody happy. Yeah, less bulk to carry around. 
Um, Steve, could you talk to just people, you know, members or customers walking into the branch requesting large sums of withdrawals too, and maybe your best practices that you've seen to to address that? Yes. Like if they want, say, oh. hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, or a million dollars in a withdrawal mm -hmm. in one swoop. Um, I think some of our customers have expressed concern that that's happened in policies, maybe the best handle. There was a lot of mention of this. Um, I'm actually more concerned as time goes on and if events cause people to be more concerned about their finances than they even are today. Um, the last time um, I personally saw this was back in 08 um, with the institution that I work for and it, it became a very common occurrence. Um, so a few recommendations and, and a number of you already uh, uh, mentioned this and that is having an identity agreement. Uh, you might want to consider that, that you can uh, draft the verbiage however you wish, but basically it it's in writing, it's signed by the customer and by oftentimes by a bank representative as well, saying that they understand they're taking the risk of withdrawing a large sum of money um, so that you don't have a robbery occurring right outside in the parking lot um, and hopefully no one is injured and have that customer come back on you and wanting to um, replace those funds. So that indemnity agreement basically says um, once you count it and you're out, it, it, it's your risk as a customer. Um, having an appropriate place that can store extra cash is important. You want to make sure you have a place where you can put it if an armored car drops it off for a meetup with a customer. Um, you also want to have a good spot to be able to count it. Um, you don't want to count this out in front of everyone in the lobby. It's best to have a private spot where uh, you, two bank employees can um, go into that room, conduct the transaction and shuttle it out. Oftentimes customers don't realize how bulky that much money can be as the numbers get quite large up to a million. Um, it's quite a package to carry that out unless you have very, very large bills. A um, couple of other ideas is trying to talk them out of it. They don't have to tell you, but you can ask them, you know, what is the need? Offer alternatives. Another alternative might be a direct delivery of an armored car to their business um, versus having to go through the bank at all. Um, Going up the chain of leadership, sometimes somebody else can uh, appeal to them and talk them out of it. It's just making a few attempts, especially as the dollar amounts get very large and, and the risk goes up. Um, some institutions, if it's a, if it's a very large, you know, million dollars, $700,000, um, they'll do a short notice notification to the customer so that there's not a lot of planning time if there's a concern of criminal activity and collusion. Uh, the institution gets to pick the right location for that counting issue I spoke about earlier. And um, it also gives you the option of contracting for security officers or maybe having law enforcement do a drive-by uh, while the transaction is taking place just to decrease the risk a bit. Okay. I don't see any more questions in the chat as far as um, high demand for cash and cash withdrawals. Um, All right. If you have anything that comes to mind after this, let's move on here. Um, and if there's any more questions that pop up, we'll be sure to address those. So this next um, slide is questions that you listed as would liking some input from other institutions about what other people are doing, sort of that best practice scenario. So one common one was what is what are other people's plans in the event an employee believes they've been exposed? What are your next steps? While you're typing the the most common one is um, if you believe you've been exposed, it's recommended that you let your employees know, please don't come to the office and tell us, call us from home or a safe location. Uh, describe how they might have been exposed so you get a, some context to that. 
um, plan on having them contact a doctor. Um, most likely they're going to need to be quarantined for up to two weeks to, because as we all know, symptoms don't immediately appear. Open to any other suggestions that people may have. This is what we've been hearing from others. Yeah, nothing just yet, Steve. So why don't we keep going through some of these others, and then as they pop up, we will we will address those. Very good. If anyone wants to read ahead too and um, think about those in, in ahead of time, and we'll address that when we get to it. Very good. So the next one is, I'm certain you're all making decisions of how do you manage your branch lobbies, close them, appointment only, or have them open. Um, if anyone wants to compare notes on this, uh, now's a great time. All right. Um, one option that uh, Sonia's mentioning too is they they have offered an extra 80 hours of sick leave. It sounds like for anyone that has been um, believed to be, I guess, exposed to the virus too. So that's a added perk, I guess, to make sure they don't want to come in. Um, the other piece too, I think we've seen an uptick in fever detecting cameras as well that you can even put out. I think some some of our customers have expressed concern, right, that especially hourly employees don't want to um, stay home in quarantine because that means they don't get a paycheck at this point. Uh, so they'll risk coming into the admin building or the call center. Um, if you do have some fever detecting cameras um, at the entry points, you can help detect that um, before they come into the building to, to potentially contaminate or expose others. Um, we're also seeing that um, this is in the chat here uh, from Sean. I appreciate your, your comment. Lobbies uh, open by appointment only for in person, um, direct line on the door for members to call, uh, then for virtual as much as possible, online account opening, DocuSign, loan dispersals, etc. cetera. Um, and Henry's also mentioning additional sick leave as well for their credit union. So um, of course there's an option um, of implementing a donation process too. So if other employees want to donate their, their sick leave or their PTO, that's an option for those employees that are sick. In the interest of time, we'll keep moving. So the other one you mentioned was communication strategies with uh, employees. What are the method, methods you're employing and how often are you communicating with them? If I was to have a suggestion, it would be, uh, and frankly, it's what Brian, our CEO has been doing here at CSG, about every three days, some sort of a message will go out to the employees, um, providing current details, um, some positive remarks where we can. And I, I, I've seen that in other organizations um, when we're going through um, crisis events, and that seems to be a, a good time frame. Um, I also suspect you've probably communicated with your customers and have um, COVID statements on um, your app-based products and that sort of thing. So your customers are getting communication about what's going on. Uh, any input about that? Doesn't look like it other than just daily Zoom meetings too, Sean was mentioning, which is again very helpful from that perspective. Yeah, one in regards to the communications. Um, so every morning uh, at 7:30, I think it is the senior management team. We uh, we huddle up for a half hour to go over the the latest current events and what we want to do, and then we have. Um, all of our department heads uh, and all of our offices on board uh, for a, a team's call to go over what, what the latest uh, information is, uh, latest directives, get input from other centers, uh, other states, what's going on. It's a pretty good collaborative conversation to 
kind of get up to speed uh, how all the different markets are being affected and and what we need to do. We start bouncing some ideas off, but they've been pretty effective. And we we hold it every every morning at eight o'clock for a, for a half hour. Sometimes it goes uh, beyond that a bit, but it, it's been an effective tool to get everybody on the same page on a daily basis. <clears throat> We've already covered the next two items, so we'll go to the last bullet, and that one is um, decisioning around when we start pulling people back from remote working. Um, my advice would be we're, we're a ways away from that, certainly today. Um, I, it's, I think it's going to be a vast changes in the number of um, infected reporting. We're going to start hearing advice from um, government agencies, CDC, and others about information we can use to make that risk-based decision. Um, I, I strongly suspect this, it's quite a ways down the road until we're, we're pulling back on that. Any yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, one thing I want to, sorry, it's Brian again. Um, I keep interrupting everybody, but on, on the technology front, this is just beyond CG, uh, CSG. Uh, video analytics, and, and we've already implemented it here at our headquarters. Um, for instance, like heat mapping, which is a very common analytic that all video systems typically have, um, we're utilizing it for a janitorial crew. So when you go through, you know, especially the large admin buildings, but it could be at a branch level too, it'll indicate where the most areas of concern that have the highest touch points. So you may have a tele row that, you know, four of them are closed, and you can, you can easily t see that two of them that had the high use. We have the janitors focusing on those areas um, for disinfecting, which has been effective, especially when people start coming back, utilizing that to, to, to really address the high touch areas. Um, the other thing too is another common analytic is uh, people counting, which I could see being used in uh, lobbies, uh, a notification if you get beyond 10 people within a lobby or uh, queue line monitoring, which is another uh, um, a common analytic uh, uh, yeah, we're looking into uh, using artificial intelligence too, if you can actually see people, you know, within six foot of each other too. So there's a lot of video technology out there as we start getting back to a, a somewhat normal life again that we could start utilizing uh, to help prevent that. So we've been work, working aggressively on our offices um, uh, and it's been pretty effective. Um, and I think it'll help when people start coming back to the offices as well. <clears throat> Okay. All right. We've got we about 10 minutes left. If you want to keep on yep. moving through some of these, that would be great. We've covered cash pretty well. Um, the only other item here we haven't covered is um, some institutions are limiting the amount of, of funds a member or customer can remove daily. Of three to five K was mentioned uh, by. I, I suspect about 15 institutions. Um, if that works for you, um, that could be another option that we haven't previously discussed. Uh, or I think the option, I think Sonia, as you mentioning as well, are offering different denominations within the ATMs, right? So if you can offer larger bills, um, that allows your your ATM not to run out of cash as quick, um, but still satisfies the large need for war withdrawals. Um, you can kind of counter it that way as well, as opposed to offering traditional, you know, twenty dollar bills or five dollar bills. Um, you may make that happen. Uh, it's come up a couple times too, uh, just with ITM limits for those customers that have ITMs. Um, just know that th those limits um, are completely changeable and and uh, adjustable by yourself as well within your network manager software you can go in and adjust those limits um, on when you need approvals as well but i think setting that and reducing that potentially for the time being could could help uh, with the limited cash this slide lists some other uh, q a that you listed uh, protecting employees we've discussed the lexan guard um, a slide coming up um, 
that we're calling the Crisis Hub. You'll have a link there where you can go in and find these products if you'd like to uh, peruse those. And we'll be doing uh, frequent information up that slide as well. So uh, when you do receive it, I would suggest saving the link. Another one here is helping those customers that um, are not really into technology and have previously always um, been lobby customers, members. Um, any ideas of a good way to train? Has anyone developed any good training techniques? Again, that getting close to the customer thing would be an issue, I would think, during these training scenarios. Uh, anyone have any suggestions around that? Doesn't look like it at the moment, Steve. Um, oh, we've got a couple coming in here. We're doing customer care calls in lieu of in-person business development calls. Um, Excellent idea. That's one option. Um, the other piece is branch transactions, uh, online and mobile. Um, how many loan deferrals, DQ, cash to members um, on our COVID-19 applications, cash withdrawals per day, skip of payments process, KPIs geared, um, more around current state of items. So uh, those are some KPIs that um, someone had mentioned earlier uh, that they'd like to track as well. So not necessarily related to the question you just asked, but just things that there as a senior management team are keeping a, keep a close eye on, uh, on, on, on I, guess, uh, I guess on a daily basis. Um, but um, yeah, I'm also mentioning that they're doing, we are here for you calls to your members. Um, and we've seen it too, I think uh, as mentioned earlier, but just having a, a notification coming from either the CEO or someone from the senior level of, of the institution to either their members or customers or to their staff, just assuring them that things are okay, that you've got plans in place, uh, keeping them updated of kind of your opinion on the status of everything as well, as opposed to skewed viewpoints as well that may not line up with, with your institution's philosophy on things uh, is very important. The final one on this page was mentioned several times of um, people having difficulty getting uh, cleaning supplies. Other than searching for several different different businesses and locations to get those, does anyone have any suggestions? Sometimes going to um, stores that are less visited or less likely to be the stock up kind of um, supermarket kind of scenario. Uh, you might try smaller stores to find um, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, and that sort of thing. Anyone have any input based on uh, your success thus far? Doesn't look like it just yet. We are, uh, this is Brian again, we've, we've been sourcing uh, hand sanitizers by the gallons and we've, we've actually uh, procured some pro uh, plastic bottles. Um, we're still working on getting more. If anybody out there does have certain areas or branches that are short of hand, hand sanitizers, we might be able to help. I can't promise, but we're, we're trying to get as much as we can, but we could have a tech drop, drop a bottle off uh, uh, if need be, if you have an area that's uh, uh, an affected area. Um, which is another interesting thing too we found today is uh, you guys are, are familiar, uh, familiar with the CAP index uh, reporting tool. They're coming out with uh, high COVID-19 areas, um, which uh, just came out today too that we're inve investigating further too, which is uh, just more information and um, down to maybe the county level or city level of uh, hotspots. Uh, but again, that just came out, but we'll, we'll be digging into that further as well too. <clears throat> So this is a sample page that I'm showing right now of the Cook Crisis Hub. Uh, it will be a one-stop shopping for us for any updated information about um, COVID updates. Um, this particular scenario has uh, Scott featured with 
um, seven ideas to help with efficiency uh, around the, the COVID crisis. Um, we'll have products available. Um, we'll be sending everyone the link to this particular site and we'll keep it updated. So um, suggest you log in and, and check it out. Yeah, don't judge the actor though. He's um, not highly trained in that video, just in case anyone was wondering. But uh, no, I do think um, in general, this this video is just some ideas that we've come up with and we've come up with more ideas since we post this video even uh, of ways just to manage this crisis. Um, I think like I said, this is, this is an ever evolving and daily change that we're seeing uh, across all of the different markets too. So I think the collaboration you all have provided today, I think is very valuable. I think that's what we love about the financial industry is the willingness to share. Um, so keeping that up is is something that we uh, would love to continue to help facilitate that. If we can, I think we're in a unique position as a company with the, the relationships that we have with you all to put something like this together. And we're happy to do that again. Um, but I think, you know, I would just posted on LinkedIn if you get a chance to look at it uh, late last week about, you know, we've we've been hearing for years about the branches dying, the branches going away. And I don't think that's what we had in mind when this came about. Right. Um, the branch did actually close up in a matter of weeks, uh, days in some cases, um, and now it's forcing us to interact with our customers and our members in a different way. Um, and I've been pretty excited to see some of the technology used in different ways that wasn't maybe initially designed to, to work in one way, but it's being adaptable to serve uh, in these unique times. But I'm also curious kind of once we get past all this, um, kind of where that takes the future of our branches and the future of our business. Um, within the financial sector, um, how we continue to serve the consumers for their banking needs. Um, that's, it's been something that's top of mind as well for me. I'm very curious at this point. Um, just lastly, I guess, before we, before we jump off, Steve, or before we have any other questions, if anyone else has anything that they want to have answered before we finish today, um, do you want to just maybe off, talk about what you can offer, I guess, Steve, as far as crisis planning and helping unique institutions if they want to talk with you and more on a one-on-one -on -one detail as far as helping out the new norm and helping out with um, just planning in general through whether it's crises or workplace violence or communication, um, unique pieces that you've seen throughout your career that you could help provide. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll advance the next slide in just a moment, but yeah, I'd be happy. This has got nice contact information. Um, also, I'll always just reach out to your typical CSG contact um, as well during this time. We're, we're all here to help, but um, if you would like to, uh, what, one thing that has not happened much, only two of you reported that you'd received threats involving the, the virus. Uh, it's been my experience as frustration grows, people will use whatever is getting a lot of media attention as part of their threat. Um, I, I hope this difficult times brings out the best in people. It doesn't always. Um, your, your employees are going through enough, so I hope it doesn't increase. But if you would like to discuss um, anything around crisis policies, feel free to reach out to me. Frankly, if you just want to bounce some ideas off someone, I'm, I'm available for that as well. Uh, we really want to help out in any, any way we can during this difficult time. So um, thank you all for being here today and, and for sharing as much as you did. Uh, I know a lot benefited from it. Yeah, I think sometimes it's unique to get this an outside perspective sometimes, right? When we're stuck within, even within our company or within a group or a management group, uh, it can be hard to get new, unique, fresh ideas and perspective on things. And again, we're more than happy to provide that. I think, Steve, you're uniquely qualified, having worked um, with a bank and credit union for such a long time that um, you've been there and have, have walked in their shoes before as well. So, um Thank you, everyone, for your time. We appreciate um, giving us an hour of your time today. We'll be sending this recording out um, and, uh, and these slides as well. And if in the meantime, reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, but until then, thanks again for everything. And we appreciate um, your relationship. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.